talking, but I'm going to leave you with this. Um, you know, building actually used to happen at the federal level. It was called public housing. Um, and people bought homes in neighborhoods, not because they necessarily fell in love with those neighborhoods on their own. They had no other choice. The history in California includes restrictive covenants and deeds that precluded African Americans from owning homes where they wanted to. We were relegated to certain communities that at the time were undesirable. We found a way to make them desirable. We found ways in spite of how the federal government and how some states treated us to build families and to build a little bit of generational wealth from our property. I would argue that this is an attack on what middle and working class African Americans and other ethnic, um, ethnic groups have been able to achieve in spite of how we've been treated. And so how dare you now snatch away using law which has been systematically used against us for generations to deprive us of the small amount of wealth of stability that we have been able to achieve by using these kinds of laws to once again kind of denigrate or dismantle communities. Many folks who are fighting these, this, these laws and some of the other laws are not living high on the hog. And I think that's the assumption that's out there. If you're in a single family home, you're living high on the hog. You've got umpteen cars and umpteen swimming pools and you're keeping this kind of access from other people. And it's important to argue that and say that's not true. In many instances, there are multifamily, there are number, a number of family members living in a single family home. In many instances, that single family home is almost being used like apartments. You know, we are taking in folks that have recently uh, been unemployed. We are taking in our family members who might have lost their housing. We are taking in family members who have just sort of been released from our criminal system, our criminal justice system. Uh, we are doing the most with the little bit of land that we have. Um, and so take a pause on the bias that you have for how communities of color use single family homes and manage communities with single family homes. And I think that that is a story that homeowners associations and groups like yours need to continue to talk about. It is not that we don't want more housing. It is not that we love seeing our homeless brothers and sisters on the streets. It's that we have to find a way to accommodate these challenges without denigrating the small amount of progress that many of us have been able to make over generations where we have also sort of had to push against the obstacles of government to do so. So I want to Thank you all, like I said, for your persistence. And I, I was sharing with you sort of where the bill is and how these bills are getting through so that you see the, the dynamics that I am working with. It is very hard to kill a bill that has, that's able to get out of a committee where the chair of the committee is also the author of the bill. So it doesn't mean you can't do it. It means you just have to use a number of other kinds of strategies to do so. Um, but you are the armor and the defense that I have. And I just want everyone to know that I know that. So thank you, John. Thank you, Diane. Well, thank you, Assembly Member. I didn't know you were a preacher in your part time. That's pretty impressive. Some nice advocacy there. We appreciate you coming and, and taking such a strong stand on behalf of our communities. Very much so.